Shadia Mansour featuring the Palestinian hip hop group DAM. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. For more than 35 years, thousands of nonviolent drug offenders have been jailed for lengthy terms under New York's draconian Rockefeller drug laws. The laws impose lengthy minimum sentences on drug offenders, even those with no prior convictions. The laws have disproportionately targeted people of color while giving prosecutors de facto control over how long convicts are jailed. But those laws could be on their way out. The New York State Assembly is set to vote today on legislation that would allow judges to send drug offenders to substance abuse treatment instead of prison. The legislation would also allow thousands of prisoners jailed for nonviolent drug offenses to have their sentences reduced or commuted. New York Governor David Patterson is also preparing a measure that would let judges determine sentences instead of having to follow state-imposed mandatory minimums. It's the latest step in a long campaign to repeal the Rockefeller drug laws. The effort's been propelled by a grassroots campaign involving many ex-prisoners. I'm joined now by two guests. Uh, here in the Firehouse studio, Kirk James was released in 2003 after serving nine years in jail as a first-time offender. He's now a social justice activist who actively campaigns against the Rockefeller drug laws. Also in the Firehouse studio, Caitlin Dunkley. She's coordinator of the Correctional Association's Drop the Rock campaign, the main grassroots campaign to repeal the Rockefeller drug laws, uh, along with the William Moses Kunstler Fund for Racial and Social Justice. And on the line with us from State Capitol of Albany is Assembly Member Jeff Aubrey. He represents New York's 35th Assembly District in Queens. He's led efforts in the New York State Legislature to repeal the, Rock drug, the Rockefeller drug laws. Um, well, why don't we begin with uh, Assemblyman uh, Jeff Aubrey. Tell us what the legislation that you've co-sponsored is today. Many have characterized it as repealing the drug laws, but it's not exactly doing that. Um, it doesn't entirely repeal all that Rockefeller does, but it does uh, restore discretion to judges for offenses from the B level down, so that a judge will no longer have uh, be bound by the mandatory minimum, and will be able to use a variety of options regarding sentencing for someone who is. Um, convicted or pleads to a drug possession or sale charge. Explain what a mandatory minimum is. A mandatory minimum essentially establishes a, a minimum number that an individual must serve if convicted. There, there is no discretion associated with that. Um, so uh, that would mean that that person must go to prison and must serve that particular period of time. And by removing it, we give, as I say, the option for treatment or split sentences or a variety of options that a judge might fashion once he looks at the full evidence uh, of a case um, uh, after a, a trial. Kirk James, why don't you tell us your story? Hey, how you doing, Amy? Well, I was incarcerated at 18 as a first time, um, as a first time offender, so to speak. I was a first year college student who was approached by um, an undercover informant who actually turned out that he worked for the ATF. Um, and this Bureau person, of alcohol, tobacco, fine. Yeah, and what this person actually did was, I, I like to say that I was entrapped. I don't know what better word to say, but I never sold drugs. I never had any involvement with drugs. And this person told me that if I could arrange for his friends who were looking to buy drugs, um, that they would pay me a substantial amount of money. So this occurred over a few months um, where I said no. I initially declined the offer, and he was very persistent. He told me that the money would be great and um, that they'd be willing to pay a lot more than the street value, so to speak. I was eventually able to find someone who would be able to provide the drugs for them. And so I acted as a medium, so to speak. And this went on for a period of four months where um, drugs was exchanged. I had no direct... Um, I wasn't involved directly in the sale, so to speak. I mean, I, I helped to arrange the sale, to facilitate the sale. Um, and make a long story short, after four months, I was incarcerated. And it um, turned out that, you know, everything unfolded, that these guys were ATF agents, and that, you know, I was facing a substantial amount of time in prison. Actually, my first offer was 40 to life. 
40. 40 years to life in prison. And as a first time offender who had no knowledge of the criminal justice system and didn't, like, um, I don't want to say I was young and naive. I knew clearly that, you know, I was agreeing to something that Were was wrong. Were you accused of, did you have weapons? Were you accused of hurting someone? No. No. This was uh, a first time offense? First time offense. Like I said, I'd never been in trouble before. I was 18 years old. I was actually a college student. Um, no history whatsoever. And no prior criminal activity. I'll be very clear on that. That this was actually my first time involved in any type of criminal activity. That's why I use the word entrapment, so to speak. Um, so I was in the situation, I mean, as an 18-year-old, you can imagine, I was very scared, I was very afraid, and like I said, my first offer was 40 years of life. Um, eventually, my family was able to afford legal representation, and by then, you know, the entire story came out, and, it, you know, I had numerous charges, even though, like I said, I didn't have any inv direct involvement in the sales, I was charged acting in concert. So I had numerous charges, and these charges were what's considered A1 felonies, A1 felony being the highest felony you can under Rockefeller drug laws, which each conviction lead into a term of 15 a life minimum. So um, after about six months in the legal process, um, my lawyer didn't feel that it would be very wise for me to go to trial and actually steer steered me towards taking a plea of seven a life with the, um, with the belief that I'd be out a lot sooner. He told me that I'd be eligible for um, work release programs, I'd be eligible for different type of How long did programs. You serve? I ended up serving nine years in prison. Nine years. Yeah. How unusual is this, Caitlin Dunkley? It's not unusual at How all. How many people are in jail as a result of the Rockefeller drug laws? Right now, as we're sitting in this room, there's twelve thousand people who are serving time under the Rockefeller drug laws in New York. Twelve thousand. You're with the Correctional Association. Explain what that is. The Correctional Association is a nonprofit agency that was founded in 1844 and works on a range of incarceration policies and prison policies. Uh, and Drop the Rock is the campaign, the statewide grassroots campaign, to repeal the Rockefeller drug laws. What is your assessment of the bill that the New York legislature is going to be voting on today, the Assembly? I think it's a really positive step forward. Um, and I think. <clears throat> Jeff Aubrey, Assemblymember Jeff Aubrey, for all of his leadership on this issue for years and years. Uh, he introduces a full repeal bill every year, and that's the bill that we support entirely. The, the reform bill, which is going to be voted on, I believe, tomorrow in the State Assembly, is, like I said, a step forward, but has also some shortcomings to it. What are your concerns? My concerns are that it limits judicial discretion in, in many cases. And so, in particular, if people have any history of a violent felony in their past, in the past 10 years, if anyone, <clears throat> excuse me, is selling to drugs to a minor, if anyone is charged with a sex offense, uh, and if anyone has a gun during the, the commission of the crime, all of those people are going to face mandatory sentences, and the judge's hands are going to be tied in those cases. Meaning the judge has no discretion. The judge has no discretion in those cases. And so at the end of the day, it's going to be 40 or 50 percent of future drug offenders are eligible for discretion, and another 50 percent are not so eligible. So this is only going to affect half of the people? Ballpark about half of the people. And what about those yeah. who are in jail right now? in terms of their sentences, some of 25 to life, whatever you, Kirk, talking about 40 years to life you were first offered. Um, Caitlin, what about uh, those people in jail now? There'll be some retroactive relief for B level, uh, people charged with B level felonies and down, meaning B, C, D, and E. Um, and a, folks who are serving time for A-level felonies will not be eligible, and folks who are coming in for A-level convictions will not be eligible for judicial discretion. An A-1 felony now carries a sentence of 8 to 20 years in state prison. Assemblyman Aubrey, you've introduced repealing the drug laws, truly dropping the rock, but this is a reform measure. Why isn't the legislature, which is now Democrat, and you have a governor, David Patterson, who um, in the past, what, in 2002, was arrested calling for the dropping of the Rockefeller drug laws. Why not go forward with your repeal bill? Um, the three-way negotiations that we've been in before, but prior to us establishing and putting this bill forward, clearly showed that there were limitations in our ability to pass a full reform bill. Um, and that comes from looking at 
you know, the, the number of people required to pass it in both houses and uh, recognizing that we have, even with a democratically controlled assembly and Senate, we have uh, a spectrum of very liberal legislators to more conservative legislators who have still have issues and concerns about, uh, you know, full repeal of Rockefeller. And as we have in the past, over the past years, as we did in 2003, 2004, you know, we've, we've moved step by step to attack Rockefeller um, and remove remove the most onerous component parts of it as the top sentences having been taken down in 2004 um, for both A1 and A2s. And, and we're really just 